Welcome to the introduction of TOGAF ADM phase B, C, and D. In the previous phase, phase A, we've defined the architecture vision and secured the approval of the architecture work proposed. In phase B, C, and D, we will work on identifying the baseline and target architectures. Instead of introducing phase B, C, and D separately, we put them together because the three phases do share similar goals, objectives, approaches, and steps but just each phase focuses on a specific architecture domain. We say the main goal of the three phases is to get the architecture right. As said, each phase focuses on a specific architecture domain. An enterprise architecture consists of three domains, the business domain, information systems domain, and technology domain, which are the focuses of phase B, C, and D respectively. The goal of phase B is to develop the baseline business architecture in representing the components that form the business and their interrelationships today. And the target architecture, which is the business architecture we want to develop. Phase C focuses on information system architectures. You will develop the baseline and target architecture of the data architecture to find out a comprehensive approach to data management data migration, and data governance. Besides data architecture, you also have to develop the baseline and target application architectures to find out the approach to the coordination of application resources. Will you build a new system? Will there be an integration of existing systems? You have to figure out all this in phase C. Phase D focuses on technology architecture. Again, you have to develop the baseline and target architecture to represent how devices and physical software components are allocated in a way that can support the operations of application components. Once you've finished developing the business, information systems, and technology architectures, you have to identify the differences between the baseline and target, known as the gap. You have to rationalize and justify the architectural approaches. By the end of phase D, you will need to produce the architecture definition and architecture requirements specification. Activities of phase B, C, and D. Activity 1. Develop architecture definition. Let's refresh our memory first. We said that an architecture spans three domains. Let's take a closer look. The first one, the business domain. Business domain focuses on the product and service strategy and the organizational, functional, process, information, and geographical aspects of the business environment. The second one, information system. The information system domain focuses on IT system, services and processes, and the interfaces of those IT-related resources. The third one, technology domain. The domain focuses on the allocation and coordination of devices and physical software components in supporting IT services. In phase B, C, and D, we will develop architectures for each of the three domains. Baseline architectures will be developed to represent the current situation, while the desired outcome will be represented by the target architecture. In between the baseline and target architecture is what we call the gap. A gap consists of items that have been left out or added. We have to perform a gap analysis to find out the changes which constitutes the basis of requirements of the changes. We will go through each of the architecture domain. Let's talk about business architecture first. Here, we are using Archimate's diagram to describe the organization structure. The diagram focuses on the organization of the company, a department, or a network of companies. In this example, the high-level organization structure of Archisurians is presented with its main locations and departments. And here are the key stakeholders of the company. With the key stakeholders identified, you can describe the major business functions involved in the business, grouped by stakeholders. After that, evaluate the business functions by modeling the processes involved. Model the application services that support the business operations, and the application components that provide the services. When you perform this step, you may need to consider the fact that the same business function may be supported by different application services when being performed under different business domains. Like in this case, the function handle claim may involve different services in handling different kinds of insurance. 
so you will need to combine the various scenarios to figure out the application surfaces and the components involved. Finally, perform the necessary factorization and optimization and produce the target architecture. Once you've developed the baseline and target business architecture, carry on to developing the information systems architectures. The development of information systems architectures include two parts, data architecture and applications architecture. Data architecture describes the major relationships between the conceptual business objects and its logical data objects. Here is an Archimate diagram that shows a subset of the business objects that Archisurance defines. Part of the customer information involves an insurance file, which is composed of insurance requests, insurance policies, and damage claims. Besides, there is a number of specialized insurance policies defined, one for each of the insurance type. This is the data dissemination diagram. It shows the relationships between business objects, data entities, application components, and functions. The diagram represents how the business objects are to be physically realized by the application's components. This is another data dissemination diagram, which shows the target architecture with the back office suite in place as a replacement of the policy administration components existing in the baseline. This is the baseline application's architecture. It shows the overview of the current application landscape and the relationships between the application's components in terms of the information flows or the services they provide and consume. This is the target application's architecture. As you can see, a back office suite has been created and it comprises a number of application components that support the various back office activities. Once you've developed the data and application architectures, you can move on to developing the technology architecture. Here is an example of the baseline technology architecture. It shows the software and hardware infrastructure elements supporting the application architectures, such as physical devices, networks, or system software, such as operating systems and databases. This is the proposed target architecture with the integration of some systems. Gap analysis is the process to compare the baseline and the target architectures in recognizing the differences in between. Through gap analysis, you know what components that will be removed and added by implementing the target architectures proposed. The gap can be visualized in an Archimate diagram like this. It contains all the components you can find in the baseline and target architecture. In this case, the application's architecture. By applying different color code, you can easily indicate whether a component exists only in the baseline, target, or in both of them, so you know what components are removed or added. In this case, the components in red exist only in the baseline, but not in the target, which means that they won't exist anymore under the target architecture. The green component, which is the back of a suite, is a new application component that exists only in the target architecture. This is another Archimedes diagram that shows the gap analysis of the technology architecture. Similarly, components from baseline and target are all added into the diagram. The use of different color codes tell whether a system component will be kept, removed, or added under the target architecture. Activity 2. Develop Architecture Requirements Specification the architecture requirements specification outlines what an implementation project must do in order to comply with the target architecture. So what is an architecture requirement? Architecture requirement is the condition or capability to which an organization must conform in creating an enterprise architecture. Let's take a look at some of the characteristics of a good architecture requirement. We will explain with several examples. Example 1. Separate back office servers will be replaced by a shared server cluster located in the data center, at home and away headquarters, to reduce maintenance costs and to solve the problem of data redundancy. This requirement covers two important points. First, it describes the necessary change to perform in an architecture, which is a replacement of several back office servers. 
by a shared server cluster. Second, it describes the reason behind the change, which is to reduce cost and to solve the problem of data redundancy. Another example, upgrade of operating system is required because the version we use currently is outdated and does not support the technology we need. Besides describing the change required, this requirement also explains the limitation of the existing architecture components, which is the outdated operating system makes it impossible to support the technology required. Besides detailing the architecture requirements, you also have to indicate the measurement of the success implementation of those requirements, which can be done by using key performance indicators, or we simply call it KPI. A key performance indicator, KPI, is a measurable value that demonstrates if the architecture work is achieving a business objective set out by the sponsoring organization. Here are some examples. The first KPI is about the profits in six months. It is required that the profits has to reach 1.5 million in six months. If all KPIs are passed, the architecture works are said to be a success. Results of the phase B, C, and D. The primary goal of phase B, C, and D is to produce the baseline, target, and the gap for the three architecture domains, which are the business, information systems, and technology. In this phase, the following deliverables will be produced architecture definition document and architecture requirements specification. So we can now move on to phase E. In phase B, C, and D, you've developed the target architectures and recognized the gaps between the baseline and target architectures. Before you go implementing the requirements, you have to identify the delivery vehicles to effectively deliver the target architecture, which is what you will do in phase E. Thanks for watching this video. See you in phase E.